Straight out of Compton, original streets Grew up with the lion, see what the criminals see Now he a giant and a pivotal key Got it down to a science, this the visual streets He came up with bullet, he came up with turtle Live life to the fullest, he put it all in the journal We dodging them bullets, we jumping them hurdles It's the hood postman, we in the streets universal uh. For the postman, Professor Billy Mayo. This is not a glorification or a glamorization. This is an education. You can go anywhere in the world and get a couple of lives, but you come right here to get your treats. Be sure to click the notification bell, like, subscribe, and share, drop a comment down below. So when the dope content hit, it'll feel like it's the first and fifteenth. Lock the door. Professor Melly Mayo, the hood postman. Who am I with today? You Avalon Blue, man. So part the, the host of In the Whip Wednesday. Avalon Blue, let me shake your hand, man. What up, I'm baby? Whoa, what up, man? How you doing, man? Oh man, she hang like snot. It is a pleasure, man. I, I see, man. Every time I see you, man, this is the second time I'm seeing you, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But both times, that face just lit up. Man. Oh man, I appreciate that. Oh man. man, let's get into it, man. Where did you grow up at? I grew up right here in South Park, man, on the east side of Los Angeles my whole life, man. Your whole life? My whole life. I'm, I'm, I'm what you call a, 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 a day one. A day know, one? A day one. My mama went to John Adams, you know what I'm saying? My mama went to Jeff, you know what I'm saying? Me, I grew up over here. I'm like a, a third generation black in my community, you know what I mean? So my grandma migrated, my mama went to school, and I was here from day one, man. Give me the boundaries of of, of five tray. Give me the boundaries. What are like mm -hmm. Avalon and... I, 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 I maintain... Uh, Vernon Slauson for Maine and McKinley. I maintain that. You maintain that? Maintain that. Maintain that. And how many years you been maintaining that? See, I've been banging 35 years. We maintain that 35 years. Man, I see you got the golf cap on, so I know you OG with that. <laughs> hey, man, I'm not in their lane, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in their lane, man. I grew up. When, I, when, hat, when dudes wore these hats, it was grown men wore these hats. Gotcha. Grown men. When they said the older cats. I'm, like, I'm with the young cats. You know, I'm an older cat. You know what I mean? So did you also go to Jeff? No, I didn't go to Jeff. No, I didn't go to Jeff. I couldn't what go high to Jeff. school did you attend? I, I went to the near High School. I went to Granada Hills. Granada Hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you get the name Avalon Blue? Shit, man. You know, my, my, my bro, Big Blue, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he got caught on the set. They gave him the name Avalon Blue. I'm like, that's your name from the hood? Cause like, yeah, I, I want to be too. I like that name. And I, and I like how his name sound. I said, I want to be too, because just because of the name sound. What year are we talking? She talking like 86. 86. Okay, his name. What factors and circumstances led to you becoming Avalon? Because as we can look around, the boundaries you should name, there are other sets within that's in close proximity, right? Well, well I, I would say for myself, you know, everybody had their own story how they got to the set. Mine, you know, for trauma. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, I lost my mom. Talk to me about that. You know, I lost my mom when I was young. You know what I'm saying? My papa absent. I don't got no big brothers. You know what I'm saying? So, the, the 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 boys on my block was like my brothers. We, I didn't see us. I didn't see us as a gang. We was all neighbors. You know what I mean? When well, we grew up banging, my mama knew your mama. You know, something happened to me. I better come home with you. My mama and your whole family didn't know, know just that one part. We knew the whole family. So we got claiming to set. To me, it wasn't like it was nothing different. These the same people I've been knowing my whole life. It, it wasn't like I, I went to somewhere else and joined something else. It, you know, they called us a gang. I called us the kids on the block. What impact has Avalon had on your life? If you go back, go back in hindsight and coming up, speed it up to the day, what impact has that had on your life? If you if you just had to add it all up. I got a lot of scars. You know, I, um, my uncle, he a military man. And, and every time we have a PTSD conversation, we always associate it with the military. So I asked my uncle, I said, you know, uncle, how many times you been on, on, on active duty, a war? I say about two or three times. And I said, well, how many people that got in boot camp with you that still uh, captured across any line? So I don't got no friends that joined boot camp with me that's captured to this day. I said, well, uh, uncle, I'm going to tell you that your nephew been through quite a few wars. Uh, and I got quite a few soldiers that have died across any line that's still there to this day. So, you know, I got trauma. I picked up PTSD from being in the streets. I, I picked think, that up. I, I think I think we a lot of us have, and some of us some of us are willing to admit it. Others are not. But I, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, because here's the thing, right? If you went to sleep and a miracle happened, mm -hmm. and you woke up, what would your life be, and what change? Hmm. And this is trauma based question. 
Hmm. If I woke up in a miracle, what would change? Yeah, just whatever miracle, whatever miracle you feel like that needs to happen, or maybe, maybe not. Well, it don't have to be. Oh, I, I would say, if I woke up, man, in a miracle that I would like to happen. Yes. Every black man that has a voice, we all sit down, man, and have a conversation to share that we all want the same things for our kids and our families. You know, you know, a one-on-one -on -one handshake goes a long way in in, in, in the entertainment. You know, you know, I, I, my dream to have all the black men come together, man, and we have a conversation, bro. I'm not saying I'm tougher than your than you. I want my son to make homeschool to say I want, I want your son to make homeschool. But you know, we we, we so busy with this music and sidetrack to sidetrack to sidetrack we don't get a chance to really have a conversation on what, on what direction we're going in one of the greatest tools that god gave us all was the ability to communicate he gave us words right. those words impart feelings and emotions and and understanding but if we don't communicate right how can we get understanding amongst us but see see you know it's, 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 it's the situation of that doing the marriage incarceration of the black person in los angeles the repercussion is the only conversation that we have in common is going to jail. The average black man, we wish we could talk about college tuition, how you sign up for this class at college. We, we wish we could have a conversation, but for, for what the, uh, America done for us, we got so many uh, uh, jailhouse stories, we don't got enough success stories. So we can't, it's kind of hard, we, we, we got to see, see each other some different than an ex-gang member. We got to see each other, man, as a trauma survivor, bro. That he reaching out for help, bro, and know how to deal with that. Because sometimes we used to laugh about it. The homie crazy, cuz. But if, if you pay attention, he might really be documented, bro, as something. So you need to pay attention to him and get him that help, bro. Don't laugh at him because you can't get all your problems solved on no blood or no alcohol bottle. Are there some misconceptions about Avalon Blue that's out there that maybe that you would like to... Uh, misconceptions, well... I, my homie, my, my homeboy, Cell, he asked me, he said, what are you, Blue, a, 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 a gang member, a, a, a community activist, a family man? I told him, all the above. If you out here on some gangster shit, you got to be politically correct. And every G love their family. My job is to, amongst these kids, make the unpopular decisions that they're not mature enough to make for themselves. When engaging in dialogue with other gang members or gang sets or gang culture, mm -hmm. is it important? Is it important to to approach it with the conversation with empathy, the desire to have understanding? Mm -hmm. I, I, I come. I come with respect first. I come with respect first, and uh, for instance, the Swanee Flies and villain, the local Mike the Sinbad's and villain. You know, my understanding with them. I'm not never said that we're tougher than you. It's not a tough man contest. It is when you got jumped to your neighborhood on the east side, it did not look like this. It did not look like this. So let's salvage what we have left. That's not about who the toughest, because when the homie got a job for doing 10 years, he, tell me he don't recognize his own hood no more. I want to say I spoke to you, you and you. Well, we could have salvaged everything, but they decided to say fuck it and let it go to the toilets. So what would we be? What would we be if we had a collective amongst all of us? In other words, it didn't matter what your what your tribe is or what mm. your name. What, what what would that be? What would that look like? What would that feel like? Personally, it would be most people who know each other. You know what I mean? Is that a lot of people? Men, you know, a lot of people have done time in prison with each other. A lot of people put bangs on the streets together. With the with the the three strike situation, it kind of split up, split up, split us up. If every man who has Satan, most of us know each other. We just ain't caught up to each other yet. They had that conversation, man. They, hey, man, we was on the yard together and we programmed. We could program on the streets the same way. So I just feel a lot of uh, that would happen. A lot of find out that we related. But we can't, but it got to be men outside. We can't let the kids run the show. See, just because on the internet they don't see nobody's talking with gray hair. They thinking that the guy with the black hair run everything. No, the dude with the gray hair got the wisdom. All I'm gonna do is tell you what worked and didn't work for us. So if you try the same thing that we tried, I'm gonna tell you what the outcome gonna be on that in particular move because we tried it already and it didn't work. So with technology, social media now plays a vital part 
and it in impacts us on a daily basis. I mean, in a nanosecond, a story can go up and just blow up. I mean, go viral, and we all just rush to it. Um, do you believe that we now in in this craze that we we all addicted to it, or or is it, or is it just me? I'm just looking at it wrong. Uh, it become it it, it become addictive, but the problem is that people believe in it too much. They believe in the, in, 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 the, uh, in the in the salesmanship of it. They don't they don't respect that it's entertainment. Some some people, by not having a father at home, as I want to say, they take what's on TV as face value. Where the father gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what happened on TV, and I'm gonna tell you what happened in this living room. We don't have we, we don't have enough men involved to separate the inter, the, the internet from the truth. If we, I think if we understood that we could actually use this platform and the social media, the technology of it and utilize it, adapt it and utilize it for, to build, to build bridges and fill in gaps. Right. I think we can, I think we could get a lot thing more done. I mean, you know, that's, at least that's yeah. one of my aspirations. Yeah, yeah, I feel that too, but it, 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 us, us as a people, we got to pay attention. What do we pay attention to? What are we interested in? Because we can talk pro-blackness on internet and nobody pay attention to us. I'm gonna serve an example. You know, I'm from Avalon with the homie, but I don't game bang like that. But I would do, I'll put pictures of the homie recipes just to keep my other homies' attention. Cause once I throw some poor blackness in it, I might get two likes. If I throw some wisdom in it, I might get two or three likes. So I gotta, I gotta throw some little uh, 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 streets in it to keep people paying attention. Because we don't pay attention to the truth. We pay attention to the entertainment. Not to be educated. So sometimes I got to throw a little entertainment on my page. Throw the educational in the mix of that. And I got to teach them like that because if I throw all, all education, black people ain't paying attention to that. They pay attention to the, the excitement, the dramatization. So that's the problem. We got to pay attention to what do we pay attention to? What do, what do, what, 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 what's exciting to us? So we can't always watch the, uh, the action packed movies. So what entertains them? When a person talks some straight knowledge, that don't, it seem like, that don't you know register to him i think if we understood that persistence actually persistence trumps talent genius yeah and education mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that don't have no education but yet uh we can take the guy floyd mayweather mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. floyd mayweather is not really a guy known for his smart yeah, yeah, he right, is right, smart right, right, right. but he is known for being persistent right 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 and right, that right. persistent has got him to be a billionaire right because he was persistent in the suit pursuit of things that he wanted to acquire right. that to be in this life but no mayweather had that average person he didn't have what's that he had a father that's true see see see, see when they take your father out the house i mean for myself why every why why every in generation guys start from scratch for of wisdom. The other other ethnic background, you know, I tell I tell I tell <laughs> you know, I told my son, my oldest son, his friends, I say, you know, PJ sat in the room with his daddy and grandfather at the same time. I've never sat in the room with my father and grandfather at the same time. So everything I learned how to be a man, I had to start from scratch. I had to watch the rap video, listen to Easy E, watch the big homies how they do, uh, watch how the big homies go with one of the homegirls and break up, and then he can't bring another girl around here. So I had to learn how to be a man from scratch. By taking the man out of the household, every man got to start from scratch with how to be a man because so somehow, for some reason, our man is already taken out the house. Then a lot of it, I mean, you know, I could just honestly say a lot of what people get, they get it from television. In other words, aka tell lie vision. Yeah, right. Because tell lie vision actually is programming you and indoctrinate you to to look at things in terms of what society you think you should have. Mm -hmm. How you should in terms of how you should see things. Um, I think that that we should as a collective, I think we have more in common than we do not in common and once we get past some of the, the, the tiniest little slightest little things that mm -hmm. we differ over i think we can be a, i mean we are we are a great people but chief you see but see by us not being educated male and male you know we get we, we get we get we, we lose on the language they say the language they say you know a, a, a officer asked me what is fire trade day i say the person who's asking 
He said, I'm asking. If you ask me for, for a public official, say, well, Fire Trade Day is based on, a, it's like a nonprofit. Because Fire Trade Day, we feed the homeless for Fire Trade Day. We infuse our, our community because we spend our money here. So we boost our economy on Fire Trade Day. And we look up the homeless, and it's really a, a, a soft part family reunion in that language. Now, if you want to paint it, you could you, you could use a different language that makes it look bad. But if you don't know how the how the word game is played on TV, you don't know they're talking about you. They can use the different languages, but they talk about you and your kids. But they use a different language it, to you. It they rub off on you because that's not the language that you use. So you didn't take it offensive when they say certain things on TV because they use a different language that you're accustomed to. I think they're searching for a certain archetype, and once they find it, then they zero in on it. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right. But the way you answer that, I think was. The way you should answer it. You know, because most know. most part, they say, you know, look what you do in the set. I said, homie, you know, uh, I get a lot of from my peers. Why you still go to the hood? Why you still folk the homies? And they you know, and I say, bro, I take my son to the park, bro. I let my homies, I let the little homies see me being a grown man with my son in their face. I don't want to go somewhere else and everybody call me Mr. Such and Such. And over here, I'm known as Such and Such. No, I'm going to be the same person everywhere. I'm going to have my kid with me. And I'm, a, I'm and I hope you have yours. And by, it's like I said, again over here, I got to make the unpopular decision as far as uh, amongst the kids. Amongst the kids. And, and, all, and all you guys that who, who turned your back on our community, that God blessed you, and you took your blessing and you left, shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Because you know how it was when you got left by somebody older than you. So don't act like you don't know how it feels to be left. Yeah, those guys generally become empathetic because they, they don't want to they kind of like embarrassed because now they live in this other life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they don't want this life to seep back in this. They don't even want the people that they're dealing with over here to know about this, you know, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they kind of keep it away. So, yeah, they stay away. But, you know, but I, but I said, again, you know, I'm not saying if your life don't uh, 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 um, dictate that you can come over here and come see us, be here in the spirit, bro, because regardless of what you do, bro, some having your dog ass, we gonna come see you anyway, bro. You die, and your coworkers gonna find out about us anyway, cause we come to your funeral. You, you, what you gonna be a big old scandal? And you, you hide us away until the last day, and you got stage four cancer, and the homies in the park, and the homies outside, a hundred homies outside, come see you about your dog ass. But what you, you gonna tell your coworkers? I, 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 I didn't want to tell you about all them outside. So, 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 what I tell you again. Be a grown man in front, of, in front of little homies. When you're going through hardship with your girl, man, sometimes vent to them, let them know when they go through them, when they, when they have their hard problems with their woman, that the big homie told me about this, bro. When we grew up before social media, we were socializing, Melly Mel. When we was young, we could go up there and listen to grandpa, pop to them with a brew, talk about women and shit in life, and just listen. Uncle say, go get a beer. I noticed we got a bunch of your young homies yeah, in the background. Yeah, 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 Are they yeah. always here like this? I mean, hang out like this 85. Always. Like yeah. always, always, yeah. always, yeah. always. But but to say, so we always outside. This is light. You lucky for the rain. You lucky for the rain. You lucky for the rain. Lucky for the rain. Lucky for the rain. Lucky for the rain. We'd have been out here more than this. If you can, Blue. Want to walk and talk about it? Yeah, walk and talk. Let him go see some shit. Come on, man. I take to the park. Pass the police up and that. Walk past it and let him go see some shit. Cali Finders, baby. I'm a street nigga, streets fuck with me I'ma keep pushing products till the fans get me It's Guap off top, Diamond Cordier That nigga wall won't give a bro bitch the time of day They see me climbing, they see me shining That's hard work, proof of grinding Get out.